my fucking ass. Yeah. And the manager, once he realized I was a vet, he was a vet, thank God, because he, he finally told the, the cashier and the old woman, like, look, here, come over here, you know, made it right, basically, but I, I felt so fucking bad for the old lady because I went the fuck out on her, and I know that I could have handled it better, but at the same time, when you're asked twice to back the fuck up and you don't do it, it's your own damn fault. You asked for it at that point. I went through that yesterday, matter of fact, <laughs> at Walmart. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, well, I mean, it was just, I mean, just standing in line, man. You know, I'm. Oh, I know. I, I know. I actually had, you know, the same Walmart that I got kicked out of for hitting the dude upside the head with a crutch, but <laughs> I was patiently waiting for one of the carts, the motorized carts, and the son of a bitch jumped into it. Anyway, I actually was in one of these carts, and I was in line to, uh, to return something uh, at Walmart. Um, I had a set of lights for the Christmas tree didn't work, so I was, you know, exchanging them out so I could actually get some that work. And the same thing. A lady was just up on one butt. And I'm just like, I could, like, feel her breathing on my neck. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I kind of, like, as as it, I let the line go up just a little bit, and I kind of turned to the right and then turned back into the left, so that way I could kind of be sideways. And she, she kept on doing it again. I looked at her and I said, ma'am. I said, please, can you take a couple steps back? I was like, I, I know it's busy in here. I know it's crowded. But as you see, I'm giving the person in front of me space. Can you please give me some space? Because I don't, I, I just, I don't like being trapped. I feel like I'm trapped in right now. She goes, well, I don't understand what the problem is, sir. So that's when I did let her know. I was like, because I, I, I'm, I'm a disabled vet, ma'am. I was like, I, I don't like colors, confined spaces. <laughs> and she was yeah. like, oh, okay, okay, I understand. So she did. after that, she did give me a couple spaces back. And it, actually, you know, there were some people actually complaining about a little bit of the space. And she actually stopped and stepped up and said, hey, give the man some room. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> we taught somebody <laughs> something today. <laughs> Just saying. So, uh all right, well, let's uh, let's go into to a little song break real quick from uh, one of our badass sponsors, and then uh, if you want to read that, brother, you can read that right after this. Uh-huh.
a little bit of, where are you now, about Madison Rising? Get her done. All right, looks like, uh, looks like Ghost got something pretty, pretty badass. He wants to, damn, wants to read out from, uh, somebody very, very close and special to him. So what you got, bub? This, this is from, you know, this is the post that started everything that got me fucking, you know, just completely, you know, fucking motivated, you know, after reading it. And what he says in this post is very true. Now, mind you, I'm taking this post from his, you know, personal page. Well, our unit's page, but it, it speaks true to words to what can be done. Um, and it goes to say this. It says, there's a scene in the movie Saving Private Ryan where General George Marshall says, we are going to find him and get him the hell out of there. Now, I acknowledge that's a Hollywood inject, but it does speak true to what can be accomplished when rough men of conviction with honorable intentions set forth. 22 veterans a day perish stateside in the war after the war. Veterans Administration funds and funded and spending billions of dollars, yet the scourge of 22 remains constant and unabated, seemingly. It's possible for my unit, it's possible my former unit had the very first 22 in 2003. Homeless veterans, what should we do about it? I got an idea. Let's go peel them off the bricks. Go find them. Go get them. If rough men can find two evil men hiding in the midst of half a million folk while getting blown up and shot at, it, can be, it can't be that difficult to find the homeless in plain sight. I'm no social worker, but my guts say these 22 and homeless might have certain things in common. Alcohol and ingested drugs could be a commonality to them, seemingly losing everything, having nothing left to live for, drinking a bottle of depression, drugs, clouding judgment. Lends itself to zero desire to care. So care and love them till they can do that for themselves again. I know a collection of rough men, givers, not takers who have been kicking around the idea of a foundation to we are going to get that <laughs> we are going to get him the hell out of there their idea started rocketing off the launch pad this last friday the unveiling of the foundation will occur next month urgency required it's still 22 maybe the va can get it done maybe the va can't get it done because they have no rough men might be because they don't know how to to roll on the bricks and find those in need. Those in need can't always come to you. Sometimes you have to go to them. In the faraway lands or downtown at the park right here, there are two populations of folks who will be the difference makers. The great ones, those are Americans who care and contribute. Doesn't matter their status, employment, not, not about labels. They care. They contribute. That's what makes them great then there are the quiet ones those are the rough ones shadow guys you'll never see them on cnn wearing makeup ever both populations share the same qualities they care willing to contribute you can't fake caring if you want to help let me know we will take all the help we can get work to be done by the way sadly there are sketchy folk who cloak themselves in capes of i want to help that I want to help yet take funds and seek charitable status to obtain funds only to misuse the financial support that they receive for personal gain. Quiet ones can find them too, then turn them over to FBI brothers. Those folks are turds. Don't look at them. Love them like brothers to, to see, love them like a brother is supposed to. We will get them cleaned up, fed, employed, housed. Their needs will be met. Once that's done, they will pay it forward. How do I know that? That's what quiet quiet ones did for me. Going to cut fence and sort some bastards out. Know this. If our brothers are in hell, we are going to get them the hell out of there. This, And that's pretty much the end of it. And, and Dude, I, I can't say that this motherfucker will motivate your fucking socks off. And like I said, he's, he's already got the ball rolling uh, with, you know, several other guys from my and other units um, that he's served with and you know, there's going to be shit done. And once it starts rolling, dude, it's, I'm telling you, it's going to be full speed ahead, nonstop. 
And, and it's and, and it is, dude. I I love I love the damn I love hearing those kind of words from from true commanders and stuff like that from the military, man. It's it's you just can't can't beat hearing words like that. You know, it, these, no. these are people that really want to get out here and get shit done. And they're still in the military. And trust me, when the push comes, the push is going to come. And it's going to come hard. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I served under this guy when I was over in Iraq. And him and I had a love-hate relationship in a sense because I was the one that was, you know – sent to wake him up, you know, anytime anything happened in the middle of the night or if, you know, it was his wake up call, you know, I, I worked in the S in the S shop. I got pulled for that detail and I, I got stuck with it. Did it suck? Yeah, it sucked here and there, but I got to see another side of what we do in the military as far as planning and operations go. So for me, it was kind of cool. Um, but, but, you know, after seeing how this guy would handle situations, you could not help but respect the fuck out of the man. But at the same time, love the shit out of him because he cared about his troops. He didn't, you know, he didn't he didn't do anything that wasn't overkill. But at the same time, he didn't take no for an answer. And if he wanted if when he's determined to get something done, it will get done. And look, like it said in that little you know message, you know, we found Saddam's two sons in the middle of Iraq. If we can do that, we can do anything. There's nothing unachievable at that point. And that's the God honest truth. That's right. That's the damn truth. <clears throat> and it, you know, it's like, it's like we've once said before, it takes m- more than one strand of rope to support a family. You know, not one person can do it on their own. It takes, it takes everybody, you know, joining together to support what family we have. And family does yeah. not have to be blood. All the time, family. You know, family. You know, right? you, Yoshi, you, 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 my brother. Point blank, send this. You know, and and I love you to death. And you know, it, yep. it takes it takes people. It takes people coming to join their hands together, man. And if you don't, then then it's gonna fail. You know, not not one person can hold everything up on their own. It has to be a joint effort. And you know, just like in all aspects of life. Doesn't matter if it's a job, if you're in school, or if it's on a sports team, if it's in something that you're doing. Yes, there are bad eggs out there, but you just weed them out and you keep pushing, you keep driving. You know, yep. Not everybody, not everybody thinks the same way we do, but you know, <laughs> it. Ron, sorry, Ron threw me a squirrel. <laughs> I mean, not not everybody thinks <laughs> like we do, and you know, it, it's. There's enough negativity shit out there that we just need to keep bringing out the positive.